Hey, Mike Holt here with MikeHolt.com. I thought I was done with voltage systems, got done last recording, and then I got all kinds of questions. I was all ready to do things and then I had to change my plan today. So you're ready to go. First thing, take a moment to thank God for just for blessing me. And you know, we all have lots and lots of blessings, no matter how difficult it is. You know, there's, we just gotta, you gotta honor God and thank him for that. All right, ready for this? Let's do a review of voltage system questions. First one is system bonding jumper. We're, this is not a, a, a bonding and grounding seminar. We were just talking about systems, but people started extracting some questions. So let's get into the system bonding jumper. Comment, hey Mike, I love watching you guys, but I'm confused about the installation of the system bonding jumper. If I install the system bonding jumper at the transformer, must I still bond the neutral and ground on my first means of disconnect? Now, it's a good chance you're like, I don't even know what the heck he's talking about. Well, that's a good possibility because it might not have finished my bonding and grounding class, so I can appreciate that. This is the system bonding jumper right there. It goes from the winding, goes over to that ground, I'm sorry, that goes over to that grounding terminal that is required by 450.10 to have that terminal there. And this is part of the effective ground fault current path. And the rules covering this are 250.30A1. And here's what it says. A system bonding jumper, which is little y right here, must be installed where the grounding electrode conductor terminates to the neutral terminal. So here, where the ground, well, where the grounding electrode conductor terminates. So it really shouldn't be the neutral terminal. So here's your grounding electrode conductor terminates, let's say, to this bar. It could go to the to the winding itself, but that would be kind of messy. So wherever you install the grounding electrode conductor, that is where the system bonding jumper is going to be installed. A system bonding jumper must be installed where the grounding electrode conductor terminates, we should say, to the system either at the separate drive system, and so without getting into details, the secondary winding is a separate drive system per Article 100. So you do the system bonding jumper and the grounding either at the separate drive system or the secondary drive system disconnect. And here's a secondary, secondary drive system, separately drive system disconnect. So you either do it here or here. What the heck was the question? Mike, I love watching guys, but I'm confused about the insulation system bonding jumper. If I install it at the transformer, all my graphics, I show it primarily at the transformer just because it's consistent and it's easier for us to do that. But must I still bond the neutral and ground on my first disconnected means? Okay, well, the system bonding jumper and the grounding electrical conductor connection is either at the separately drive system or the first disconnect. Okay, or, watch this, there's a word or, not both. What happens if you did both? Well, if you install the system bonding jumper, let's say right here at that transformer, I don't see if I can do this, and you inadvertently install that little strap at that panel board, which in service equipment is called the main bonding jumper. So if you put that bonding connection here, at the same time, you had that bonding connection at the separate drive system, then what you're gonna have is neutral current is going to be returning back onto the neutral, to the separate drive system. But since that neutral is bonded via this strap right here, well, neutral current is gonna travel also on that enclosure and it's gonna travel all over the place. That's a violation of 250.142. That's a violation of 250.6. Um, that's a violation of 250.30A1. In other words, the system bonding jumper connection is made either at the separate drive system or the first disconnecting means. And wherever you put the system bonding jumper connection, that's where the grounding electric conductor, conductor connection is going to be. I think that answers that question. Okay. Mike, if there is no system bonding jumper for a 12208 or 277 40 volt system, what will the meter read between line to ground and line to line? Well, if you don't install a system bonding jumper where you had a 12208 or a 277 480, see when it's slash voltage ratings, that means that there is going to be a neutral. 12208 means there is a neutral. 277 480, that means there is going to be a neutral because there's neutral connected loads on those two systems. Well, 
you have to install a system bonding jumper because it's a solidly grounded system. And if you don't put a system bonding jumper, and if there was a fault, basically this is, if you don't put a system bonding jumper, then this becomes what? An ungrounded Y system. So that's a violation because you had neutral connected loads and that neutral has to be grounded. So I think it's 250.20 that talks about what type of systems have to be grounded. And this is one of those systems that would have to be solidly grounded. So the question was, if there's no system bonding jumper, what's the voltages? Okay, well, if you, I took a graphic and I kind of doctored it up, okay? If you inadvertently did not install the system bonding jumper, do you think there's transformers out there that the electrician did not know to go from the XO to the case? Yeah, a lot, okay. Well, if they don't do that, then what happens? Well, now if you take a voltmeter from line one that was going from line to ground and that system was grounded, then you would have measured 120. But if you have your system that's floating, meaning it's not grounded, then you go line one to, to the case of the transformer or anywhere in that particular system. Brian, I think you said it was a low impedance setting in a voltmeter I would get zero because that is the actual voltage. Is that right? If, if it was a high impedance, well, then you're going to get fat on voltages. So then you know what it is. So basically, think about it, guys. You get a floating system, a wide system. Then there is no voltage from any one phase to ground. But what about the voltage between line? Well, line one and line two, well, it goes between this winding and that winding. And remember that? That was you know 120 and 120 vectorially. And we did that math there. That was 208. Line one to line three, line one, it goes from here to here. Oh, there's your one at 20 degrees. So that's 208. And how about line two to line three? That goes between this one and that 208. Interesting. Contrary to what people think. If you don't install your system bonding jumper, number one, you can't clear a fault because it's a floating system. If the first fault. Two, there, the voltages from any of the lines to, to the case are zero. But line one, the neutral, 120. Line two, the neutral, line one, the neutral, where's that here? One, the neutral, 120, two, the neutral, 120, and line three, the neutral, 120. You don't lose your voltage. You're still going to have your 120, 208 volts in this case here, but the voltage from line to ground will be zero. It violates 250.20 rules to talk about systems that are required to be grounded and you have a floating system or an ungrounded system, which is not permitted in this case. You can have ungrounded systems, but this is not one of them. You can't have a line of neutral load and have an ungrounded system or a floating system.